A topic in isotopic notation is the way that we write out an element. So we actually use a series of symbols to write that out. In any given circumstance, you could be given the elemental symbol. For example, K. K tells you some very important things, but it doesn't give you everything that you need to know. You'd also be given a number here at the bottom. And most of the time, you're given a number at the top. This information gives us everything we need to know about the element in terms of the parts that make it up. Anytime we're giving any atomic or isotopic notation, we can always determine three things. The number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons. Now based on these numbers, we have to, we have to know what we have going for us here. The bottom number is always the atomic number. The top number is what we call the mass number. The mass number is the number of protons plus, plus the neutrons. So the number of particles that are present in the nucleus. The atomic number equals the number of protons. Because all atoms are electrically neutral, so the overall charge is zero, overall charge of zero, Because the overall charge is zero, the number of protons in an atom is equal to the number of electrons in an atom. In this particular example here, we're talking about oxygen. That's given away by the symbol O. Now oxygen always has the same number of protons. In this case here, we are given that number down here with the eight, but it is redundant. We have eight protons. Due to the fact that the overall charge is always going to be zero, the number of protons has to be equal to the number of electrons. Therefore, we also have eight electrons. To determine the number of neutrons, we have to look at the mass number. The mass number is the total number of particles found in the nucleus, or another way of thinking about it is the number of mass contributing particles in the atom, the proton and the neutron. So we have 17 total mass contributing particles. Of those 17, eight are protons. A simple subtraction problem will yield nine neutrons. Now an isotope is a different version of the same element. So a different version of the same element. Because the identity of the element is based on the number of protons, protons cannot change. Due to the fact that all atoms are electrically neutral and protons aren't changing, therefore electrons cannot change. So the only thing that changes is the number of neutrons. Here are listed three different versions of carbon. All three of these versions naturally occur, and all of them have the same number of protons and electrons. All of them contain six protons and electrons. The only difference will be the number of neutrons. In this example at the left, we have 12 minus 6, 6 neutrons. The example in the middle, we have 13 minus 6, 7 neutrons. And the example on the right, we have 14 minus 6, 8 neutrons. While the protons and electrons remain the same in an isotope, the neutrons change, and therefore the overall mass changes.